Wow, it got so quiet. Welcome. Welcome. Please stand as Jim Williams leads us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Mr. President. If you're willing and able, please stand and join in the recitation of our statement of allegiance to our flag and to our country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now a personal examination, a personal examination that includes four questions about our behavior as Rotarians. Of the things we think, say, and do, is it the truth? Is it fair for all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? And will it be beneficial to all concerned? Thank you very much for those of you who are members of this club and have brought a visitor today. Please find the camera, face the camera, and I will be at your, your place with Mike. Hi, this is Brian Vickers, and I'm standing here with Alan Hurst, who's uh, here for the first time visiting with us. Alan has just moved out from uh, southern Florida uh, 10 months ago to, to Boulder, and he works with a company called Suna Design, which sells solar-powered uh, lighting systems. And his responsibility is for uh, the uh, geography of Africa. And so he does uh, a lot of selling in, in Africa, and including not only the, the lights, but the manufacture plants where they manufacture the, the lights. And so one of the recent uh, plants that he got installed was in Mali. So it creates jobs in the country for manufacturing the lights as well as uh, creating solar lights. So welcome, Alan. Thank you very much. Welcome, Alan. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Hi, this is my friend Michael Henschel. Mike is a student at the Watson Institute here in town. He'll be wrapping up in May. And uh, if you're not familiar with Watson, it's a school for uh, encouraging and developing uh, social entrepreneurship. So Michael's one of the 25 students, one of probably three Americans, so it's got a, a global reach. But uh, Michael's here today because he's already started one venture back in South Carolina where he's a native, which is focused on uh, helping youth come through the, uh, judici or the uh, juvenile detention process and reacclimate. And uh, I'll tell you more about that later. But today he's interested to hear Mike speak about uh, what's going on in our system because his latest venture has to do with social entrepreneurship among inmates to help them identify perhaps a, a dear landing place upon uh, their exit and of course reduce recidivism. So Michael, thanks to, welcome to Rotary and uh, uh, have a great day. Thank you. Welcome, Michael. Thank you. Welcome. Bill, how are you doing? This is Jan Anders. And Jen is from the faraway place of Laramie, Wyoming. <laughs> and in the process of moving back to, back to this area, um, has the double degree, has an undergraduate degree, graduate degree in microbiology. And um, she is um, looking to meet some folks in the area and just kind of getting to know some of you well. And uh, is um, six weeks ago was married. So we celebrate many things with Jen. Congratulations, Jen. Madam President. <laughs> Hello, um, please let me introduce Daniel Gully. And Daniel wears many hats. So uh, he has a organic chewing gum company and he works with people, indigenous people in Mexico with that. And he also runs a seed, a seed bank. 
Masa Seed Foundation is what it's called, and it's like a seed bank to try to encourage farmers to use local seeds that will do better in our, our harsh environment rather than buying national seeds that were. Um, so he's very fascinating, and please uh, come talk to Daniel because he's got a lot of a lot of interesting things about Daniel. So. Welcome, Daniel. Hello, my guest today is Melanie Tsung. Her background is in education and social work. She's worked in mental health, and she's now creating a platform for mental health awareness. So, if you have a chance, say hello to Melanie. Hello, hello. <laughs> Hi there, and my guest is Deb Simmons. Uh, Deb is the founder of the Reentry Initiative, which is a Boulder County based organization that helps women who are uh, leaving prison and works towards preventing um, recidivism and, and builds programs that provide housing, counseling, and other things here in the county. And she's a, currently a member of the Longmont uh, Rotary Club. The first time I came here as a visitor, I drew the gold ball out of the fishbowl and got $1,000. This is my third visit. I don't know if I'm going to get the same. But anyway, I donated a uh, Look there. The camera. The camera. I have no problem doing that. <laughs> Hi. Um, this is my good friend, Sandy Weeks. And she's been in the construction business when she first started in the 1970s in a cabinet shop in Boulder. She worked for general contractor, and in the early 80s, she was asked to come back into the office to learn estimating. So, with all that studying, in 1997, Sandy had the opportunity and started her own construction company. Yay! First, so it's called Blue Spruce Construction Services, and it's a certified women-owned general contracting company. And today's Women International Day, so that's awesome. Okay, uh, so Blue Spruce has worked on several projects here locally in Boulder, and she is, some of the places were the Flagstaff House, the Acorn Preschool at Wilderness Place, Boulder Valley Women's Health Center, and also at the um, LEAD, Platinum and Lead Gold construction build-outs, to name a few. Um, she's on, currently on a couple of boards, uh, Tension Homes, and also past president of the Boulder YWCA, past president of the Golden Green Building Colorado. Killed, Colorado one, yeah, and the founding member of the Woman Building Boulder. So she's a very prominent lady in our community, and we welcome you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, me again. Um, so I have another person that I'm, I brought to us. I met at CU at a presentation I did on networking, and this is Chidera Barry Anwubufer. And um, his family moved from Nigeria and, for, and moved straight to Philadelphia, and they moved here to Colorado when he was eight years old. Uh, they currently live in Aurora, He's a CU student for the last two years there, and he's a sophomore, double major, international affairs and psychology. Um, one day, he wants to become a lawyer. We're sitting next to Bill here. Um, goals, so you got to network properly. Okay, so goals in his life is being a lawyer, but mainly what he wants to do is provide for his family, and give back to the communities that supported him. Thank you and welcome to Dara. And to Dara, you should join the Rotaract at CU Boulder. <laughs> All right. <laughs> John. Thank you, Jim. I'd like to welcome uh, two of our finest Rotaract students here, Emily and Matthew. I'll let them tell you a little bit about what they're doing. But we're selling fudge, and we want to sell out today. So dig deep in the wallets and pull out the money. Ten bucks. Come on. 
Okay, and just a reminder, the fudge is going towards um, Honor Flight, where we're going to send veterans to Washington, D.C. Um, also, another thing Rotaract is doing is on Tuesday, we're holding a networking event. Um, I've talked about it a couple times, but just a final reminder that this is going on on Tuesday at 7.30. If you haven't heard about it or you're interested at all, come up afterwards and talk to me. Um, but yeah, we'd like to get as many people to come as possible. And, and then also afterwards, we're holding another fundraiser at Ruben's Burger Bistro. If you come, 25% um, of your meal will go to Rotaract. So that'd be much appreciated. Thank you. Hey, everybody. My name is Matthew Falcone. I'm a graduate student within uh, the Global Engineering Program at CU Boulder. So we primarily work on monitoring and evaluation of international water and sanitation programs. So I've been involved in Rotaract for a couple of years now. I moved from Buffalo, New York, out to here, still involved. So I appreciate Thank you, Kat. My guest for the third time is Carrie Johnson, a recent transplant to Boulder from Paradise, California. She was a Rotarian in Foster City, where she was a director of her club and a Paul Harris Fellow. And she is looking for a new Rotary home, and I will be submitting her proposal for membership as soon as we can get the paperwork together. Please welcome Carrie. Well. Thank you, Jim. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> uh, my guest today is Mike Kershaval who is the uh, executive director of the Real Estate Center at Leeds Business School. He's a, a Colorado native uh, who was a Betcher Scholar at CU, but then uh, went off to New York where he attended uh, graduate school at Columbia and uh, later actually taught there as well. But he, he was involved in investment banking and a variety of other things before his last job, before coming back here two years ago, where he was the uh, president and CEO of uh, International uh, Council on Shopping Centers, is that right? Which was the largest commercial real estate organization, trade organization in the world. And uh, he, uh, his dad was actually a Rotarian for, and, and uh, a very passionate one. He's been to a lot of Rotary meetings. And, his both, and, and I think two of his kids got Rotary scholarships, so he's here to take a look at Rotary Club. Please Thank welcome. Welcome, Mike. Do we have any visiting Rotarians today? If not, remember the 100 things that you can do to celebrate our, birth, our club's birthday. Just choose one. Just choose one. Mike? Great. Thank you, Jim. And thank you, uh, everyone, for coming today. It's, um, am I on? Is this on? Yeah, there we go. Hey, just thank you, everyone, for coming today. Uh, you know, it's so exciting. Uh, we, over the last two, three years, we've had to keep adding on tables. And so uh, it's really a, a pleasure. And you can tell what a dynamic uh, club we have by how many of you show up and wonderful speakers. I'm really looking forward, uh, Michael, to, uh, to your presentation here today. A couple of announcements before we move on. The first one is Larry Johnson. I mentioned it last week that he'd been sick. He just asked me to give you an update that he continues to recuperate. Uh, he'd had three hospital stays over the last two, three months. He had um, just this infection that just would not go away, but he is on the mend, and he's looking forward to coming back uh, into our Friday meetings. Um, the forms for Club 1919 are at the, uh, the back. See John Kotke if you would like to um, participate in Club 1919. If you already are a member and you need a pen, see John Kotke. Um, this is March 8th, and our 100th year anniversary is April 1st. So this is less than a month away, very exciting. And April 6th is our big gala. So I wanna talk a little bit about that. April 6th is our gala. The tickets are $139. Um, you need to put your order in to Kitty by, with your food choice and that you wanna come by March 20th, okay? And I just wanna paint a picture for the evening. This is a wonderful, we're gonna have a, um, a 1919 
a year Cadillac out front. We're going to have um, an elegant uh, you know, room with decorations, wonderful food, a program celebrating everything that this club is about, past, present, and future. It is an evening that will be filled with fun and fellowship. There will be a DJ with dancing at the end. Um, so really, I think it's something that you will absolutely want to attend. April 6th, see Kitty Kelly. Now, oh, Kitty Kelly, Kitty the Kiefer, sorry. I was wondering if you were paying attention, and good job, you passed that test. Uh, March 29th is the meeting, the Friday meeting, right before our um, April 1st 100 year celebration. And what do you have when you turn another year? You have a birthday party. So March 29th is going to be a birthday party. And what do you have at birthday parties? You have balloons, and you have cake, and ice cream, and you celebrate the people that are there at that party. So this is where I need your help. The program that day will be Rotarians. Okay? If you have a talent that you would like to share, <laughs> we have six five-minute spots. On your table are slips where you can say, my name is and my talent is this. Give this to me by the end of the meeting or email me. We will have a piano here. It's actually a keyboard, so if you're looking for a baby grand or something, you know, keep looking, okay? But we're going to have a keyboard. If you play an instrument, if you do poetry, something unique, we want to celebrate the wackiness of our club, and the MC will be Patty Limerick, and she's going to be talking about um, the exuberance of a hundred years. Uh, well, it's a funny title that I can't remember, but it'll be really funny because we all uh, love Patty Limerick. So write down what your talent is, March 29th, big birthday party, and we're going to take a photo of all of us around the cake with the candles and all that good stuff. So please come for that. On the back of the agenda, just want to talk about the back of the agenda. It lists all of the activities between now and June 30th. I want to highlight a couple of things. There's a lot of them there, and I'm going to talk about them every week. I just talked about the birthday party, March 29th. Okay? First off, March 26th, water hydration installation ceremony. We have contributed three water hydration stations to our community through the hard work of the Boulder Rotary Community Foundation, uh, Boulder Rotary Club Foundation, and you as members. Um, the 100th uh, birthday party, March 29th. I just talked about that. We're going to have an insert, 16 pages, in the Sunday edition of the Daily Camera, talking about us. And so if you would like to buy ads, you still have a few days to do that. See Lindsay Sachs. The next thing, um, oh, we're going to have a Declaration of Boulder Day through the city, saying we hereby make this Boulder Rotary Day. It's longer than that, but that's pretty much what it says. 100th anniversary gala I just talked about. Tree planting service project. This is the first time you've heard the details I'm about to give you. April 27th. It is a Saturday. We will um, plant seven trees in the park uh, in the uh, Harlow Platts Community Park. One tree we're going to, um, in addition, we're going to work to do one tree in uh, Gingy Patterson's name. Um, so please, we need labor. Um, we also need, and this is what I need right now, we're going to have a barbecue at the end. So it's like 9 a.m., you plant some trees, you get all dirty, you, you talk to your neighbors, you say, hey, these are trees, and it ends up with an all-American barbecue. You know, hamburgers and hot dogs and chips and all kinds of stuff you're not supposed to eat. And we need five people to help Kathy Olivier with that barbecue, okay? Do I see five hands? Okay, Kathy, are you paying attention? Okay, so if your hand is raised, um, go see Kathy after the meeting. Five people for that. Um, I also need now, I'm, oh, so let's keep going down. We have the Mindfulness Garden ribbon cutting will be in June, and the International Peace Park um, dedication will also be in June. So I'll give you more details about those 
as we get closer. But a lot is happening, particularly in the next couple of months. So a lot of, you've been hearing about it, now it's becoming reality. Sh shifting um, subjects here, I've got two more things before I move on to Lena. The next is we have a technology committee and um, we're looking for new members. So if you have some skill in technology, especially if you know about e-commerce, okay, because we want to have the ability to um, pay for things on the website, you know, uh, for tickets and things of that nature, please see me after the meeting, okay? We're looking for some people for the technology committee, uh, especially those with e-commerce. And I think that's it. So I have to say that I was thinking about this. One of the great things about being president is you learn a lot of skills and you get to practice a lot of skills. And so you've seen me up here for the last eight months or so um, giving tickets away, um, you know, uh, trying to sell tickets for the Wine to Water and our signature event and the gala, et cetera. And I've learned a lot. On July 1st, when I get done being president, I'm going over to Costco and I'm selling some of those vegetable mixer things, okay? <laughs> That's me, because this has helped prepare me for that. Come on over, Lana. This is a great club. I, you ask for five volunteers, and I saw at least eight hands go up. It's just such a treat to be part of this club. So our history vignette today um, is, has a focus on youth. And our club has knocked it out of the ballpark in three Rotary-related groups that are exemplary in working with young people. First, Rotaract which you have uh, heard from today. CU Rotaract came to Boulder in the 1990s. Sam Pottinger and John Mozalak are among those active in working with the group, a worldwide Rotary organization for men and women ages 18 to 29. Among its projects have been raising money for honor flights to send aging veterans to tour military monuments in Washington, D.C., with many dramatic moments when they finally see the tributes to their wartime service. Rotaract has also worked with Peruvian Hearts to help educate girls in Peru and has provided meals, collected coats, and hosted holiday parties for the homeless in Boulder. Interact. Boulder High and Fairview High Interact Clubs grew out of a community interact group formed in the 2000s by the three Rotary Clubs in Boulder. Jam Fest, a yearly battle of the bands between Boulder and Fairview, has raised some $20,000 over 10 years for attention homes. Interact makes PB&J sandwiches for the homeless, then members walk the creek path and give them to those in need. Other projects have included sleepouts benefiting the homeless, mentoring and tutoring at the Family Learning Center's after-school program, and helping organizations such as Share a Gift, Community Food Share, the Buff Bicycle Classic, and Boulder Mental Health Partners on Suicide Prevention and Awareness. Bake sales at schools are one yummy and tried and true method of raising money for these projects. Among Boulder Rotarians working with Interact are Bill Rubin, Ty Melton, Shawnee Khan, Doug Yeiser, and Nancy Chin Wagner. Rotary Youth Leadership. Boulder Rotary's Mr. Ryla, Bill Rubin, has been honored often since 2003 for his work with Rotary Youth Leadership Awards, RILA. RILA for high school students and young RILA for students entering the eighth grade. Each summer, 700 students from districts 5440 and 5450 take part in the six-day program in Estes Park during the summer. Rotary clubs pay for their scholarships at $450 per student. Students who visit Boulder Rotary afterward always talk about how Ryla has changed their lives by teaching them leadership skills. They learn how to begin a lifetime of service to others, and many return later as great Rotarians. Okay, next up on the agenda is Jim Rodowski. If you could come on up, and while you're coming up, pull out your raffle ticket, because I have the winning number right here. Okay, you ready? Two, two, five, one, zero, nine, zero. One, zero, nine, zero. Two, two, five, one, zero, nine, zero. See, if you've got that number, you win, you like money. Anyone? Oh, I see a hand raised in the back. Who's got that? All right, great. I can't see who that is, but 
It's Steve Walker? Okay, yeah, Steve. Come on over, Jim. So. You too. Right. Thank you. When you hear people speak, it's patently obvious that Rotarians make a big difference in our community and our world. <clears throat> and we have another challenge before us. It's one that we're familiar with. It's the challenge of climate change. The uh, U.S. government, even the Department of Defense, has said that climate change will threaten world security. Rotarians have already started to do something about this, and we can do more. Our PPE committee, dating from the 90s, got a head start on the rest of Rotary with this. On your monthly Excel bill, there's an opportunity. You can see your energy consumption on the current month, the prior month, and for the same month coming year. We've appealed to Excel to take the collective energy use of Boulder Rotarians and give us a monthly report on whether our collective energy consumption is greater or less for the same month in the prior year. So we have a great opportunity to decrease our carbon footprint. Our goal is for our carbon footprint to be less. The key is that Excel does need to have our permission to do this. So if you uh, will fill out the form, it's a short release form that's on your table, and leave it at the uh, counter on your way out, that would be great. Uh, this allows them to take the information anonymously and aggregate it, so each month we will know whether as a group we are using less or more electricity than we did last year. And it will be a fun opportunity to see if we can move the needle. You may uh, think that you've already done a lot, and I think if you live in Boulder, Longmont, uh, in this area, you probably have done a lot. But there is an opportunity to do more. Uh, this light bulb uh, is a great idea that someone uh, invented. And in 2017, LED light bulbs reduced uh, carbon by 200, excuse me, 570 million tons. That's pretty dramatic of uh, LED, excuse me, carbon emissions that would have otherwise gone into the atmosphere. Also, if every household in the U.S. replaced one of their light bulbs with an energy-saving energy bulb like this, we could reduce global warming pollution by more than 90 billion pounds over the life of the light bulb. <clears throat> and the same, uh, it would, it would generate the, or it would represent, excuse me, the same uh, amount of gas hold, of, or, uh, greenhouse gases uh, generated by 6.3 million cars. Next week, if you bring in your old uh, bulbs, whether they be fluorescent or incandescent, we'll give you a free LED light bulb to sort of kick this project off up to six bulbs. So bring them in any, any week in the next three weeks. So the other simple measures you can do that can be added in with this uh, system for keeping track of your energy includes installing a programmable thermostat and insulating, heating, and cooling ducts added to your home. Uh, energy audit, which uh, the city of Boulder will do for you and we'll give you information about that. Uh, those type of things can save a typical family's carbon dioxide emissions by about 5%. That's a th over 1,000 pounds per year. Turning your thermostat just down three degrees in the winter and up three degrees in the summer will reduce carbon by another 1,000 pounds a year. If every Boulder Rotarian did these two things, it would keep more than 400 tons of CO2 out of the atmosphere. So we have an opportunity to make a difference, and Rotarians always make a difference individually and even more impactfully as a group. So let's have some fun. We're going to roll this out and challenge other clubs to see if uh, we can beat them or they might beat us, and we'll have some award uh, to the winner. So we close with a question. How many Rotarians does it take to do something about climate change? All of us. Thank you. Okay, introducing our speaker, Cassidy Murphy.
Absolutely right. Proud to have him as one of our members. So thank you, Michael. Okay, we have a new member, Brian Vickers and Cassidy, introducing him. All right, I'm back. Um, I am so pleased to introduce Brian Vickers and uh, also his wife, Nancy Billica, who is not going to be up here today. Um, they are our newest members, and I had the uh, distinct pleasure of meeting them when they investigated our club online and came to join us. Um, Brian is uh, the founder of his company, Renewable Projects, and he works on uh, renewable projects, remarkably. Uh, <laughs> that's what I like about really descriptive names. Um, when he's not working, he uh, spends a lot of time with his family, with Nancy. They have two daughters, Rebecca and Melinda. Rebecca lives in New Zealand. Melinda is in her going into her second year in Peace Corps, and she's in Zambia, is that correct? And her sister, Rebecca, and her family are going to go meet them in Africa, and then I think Brian and Nancy are going to go to Zambia this summer, summer. as well. So that's an exciting adventure. Um, Brian is a volunteer. They've lived in the community for about 25 years, and he has worked in things like the South Boulder Creek um, stream team, and he works with renewable or riparian rights throughout Boulder, which is complicated. And recently, he and Nancy have become involved with both the Preserve Planet Earth and the World Community Service uh, Committee. What's amazing is um, these guys did so much homework before they even came through the door. They wanted to know what projects we had, what committees we had. And since they've been here only about a month, two months, they've dived right in. So I hope that you will dive in and meet both Brian and Nancy. And welcome. Great, uh, Gary, and um, well, everyone who else is supposed to come up here, you guys know it. Hans and Bill and Chad and Gary and the whole gang, yeah, yeah, let's go. Boy, I got an opportunity to do a joke here. Let's see here. So a DA walks into a bar. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, oh no, you guys are up now. Oh. Well, who's doing it? Okay, well, you guys get back and then Chad and you guys come up. Somebody come up. I'm dying on stage here. Let, let me help you out. Ah, uh, jeez. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'd like to reintroduce Bill Anderson to the club. Uh, Bill Anderson joined Rotary as a way to give back to the community and be of service. And because I told him there was lunch at the meetings. <laughs> Bill was born and raised in Trent, New Jersey, a great place to escape from. And he graduated with honors from the George Washington University with a double major in international politics and Western European studies. Afterwards, Bill graduated from American University's Washington College of Law. After clerking on the DC Superior Court, he entered private practice. I uh, lost my place. Bill specializes. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Bill specializes <laughs> in class actions and spent nearly 15 years in, DC, in a DC firm that focuses on class action litigation and lobbying. In August of 2012, he and his, he and his son and daughter uh, had just turned three and five. Uh, and his wife, Jamie, they left their home in Capitol Hill in D.C. and moved to Colorado to be near family and raise their children in a safer and healthier place. In April of 2018, Bill left the D.C. firm and started his own firm with partners in D.C. and New York City. Bill is passionate about social justice and excited that his new firm is providing an opportunity to, to pursue civil rights cases on behalf of minorities and disabled, in the disabled community, in addition to suing big companies for bad behavior. Uh, since joining Rotary, Bill has joined the Programming, Social, and Awards committee, Committees. Uh, he is also working with Mike Brady and other BRC members on a homeless project that he hopes to discuss with the club in the coming weeks. 
Bill is honored to be part of this fantastic club and looks forward to working with this amazing group of people. Um, on a personal note, uh, Bill and I are um, familial allies because we uh, married a set of twins. And uh, I'd also like to say, you know, as probably the most pragmatic thing I've ever been a part of, this is one of the most pragmatic people I've ever met. So um, I hope you all get a chance to meet him. Thanks. Come on up. We figured this out? Okay. Yeah, yeah we figured it out. I love it. Whoops. Except it disappeared. <laughs> you want his, there his pin code? <laughs> and mother's maiden name? Let's see here. Okay. Got it. So uh, Jim Umlin and I were fighting over who was going to... I thought he won, but apparently I did. <laughs> the, um, uh, as many of you already know, uh, this is Hans' fourth Rotary Club, starting in Grants Pass, Oregon, where he grew up, and then in uh, Portland and Aspen, where he was hospital CEO, CEO, and now at the Boulder Rotary Club. After graduating from the University of California in Berkeley with a master's degree in public health and healthcare administration, Hans began, began his hospital executive career as the chief operating officer for a 300-bed hospital just east of Los Angeles. Currently, Hans is the CEO of Mental Health Partners, Boulder County's mental health safety net provider with over six locations and 500 employees. And he uh, still is, uh, consults nationally on healthcare policy and reform uh, with hospitals and phys large physician groups, and also serves on the National Speakers Bureau for the American Hospital Association. Interestingly, Han, I, I just found out this last week that Hans is an immigrant from Finland, born near the Arctic Circle. And he first moved to the U.S. in the late 40s with his family to Olympia, Washington, where his family uh, later built uh, a hotel in Grants Pass, Oregon, uh, in the 60s, where he learned a lot about the service industry, working in all parts of the hotel and restaurant business. Uh, he's been married for 53 years to his wife, Sandy. They raised three sons, and they've lived in many beautiful places, including Corvallis, Oregon, where he received his degree, his undergraduate degree in pharmacy from Oregon State University. And he, he still occasionally actually works at Safeway as a, as a pharmacist, just so he keeps his, up his contact with patients. Uh, and it, I'm sure it keeps him grounded in the reality of the healthcare system that he presides over as well. And growing up on the Rogue River, Hans was an avid whitewater rafter and along with his sons explored many western rivers. He's a uh, uh, sports fanatic with following Pac-12 with season tickets to CU's football and basketball game. And, uh, he, he, he's honored to be a, a member of Rotary for many years. In, in two of his past clubs, he was actually the program chair. And uh, he hit the ground running with us uh, and joining the program committee almost immediately and uh, also the behavioral health uh, and wellness committee where he's been uh, participating actively in our medication take back initiative, including organizing and presenting at a panel for the District Behavioral Health Symposium in January. Uh, he's, uh, he's also participated, of course, in the mental health lecture series that we co-sponsor with the hospital and his organization, Mental Health Partners, which is now in its second uh, set of uh, series. And the next one is gonna be on February 18th. I encourage you all to come to that and please welcome Hans to both of you. All right, we got an announcement video. Check, check one, sibilance, check. Welcome to spring in Colorado. Being humanitarians, 
and every Friday we meet. Hey, hey, we're Boulder Rotary. And people say we monkey around, but we're too busy. Eradicating polio. Hello, Rotarians and guests, and thank you for being here today. Today is International Women's Day, and I want to recognize all of the women in Boulder Rotary. Thank you. Let's bust the top off this thermometer. You can still become a Club 1919 member. Man, John Cocky can sure cut a rug. Well, come out and see him at the 100th Anniversary Gala of Saturday, April 6, 2019 at the St. Julian Hotel. It's going to be amazing. Come join us next Tuesday for the Mental Health Lecture Series, Reinventing the Community's Mental Health Care. And Peter Ewing is looking for room captains still to staff the five breakout rooms at NIAN 2019, which is the Youth Exchange Conference on March 14th through 16th. Hector and Laura are nearing the end of their youth exchange and they still have a couple things they want to do. They'd like to go to a basketball game, a Brazilian restaurant, go to Waterworld, head to the Nuggets game, Red Rocks, Colorado Springs, Great Sand Dunes, Black Canyon, Rocky Mountain National Park, the Royal Gorge Bridge, Waterworld. If you can help, contact Chad Stamp. And continuing their tradition, today and next Friday, the CU Rotaract Club is selling fudge to sponsor a veteran to get on the honor flight to see memorials for what they fought for. Please support your Rotaract Club and these veterans. Join us this coming Tuesday, March 12th from 4 to 6 p.m. at the Rio Grande for a happy hour. Hey, and remember, Prohibition starts the next day, so this is your last chance to have a drink with your fellow Rotarians. Next week's program is Mike Simpson, Managing Earth's Orbit in Challenging Times. All right, let's quit monkeying around. Everybody, say it with us now. Have, Have a great, great weekend. weekend. All right, thank you, Daryl and Sally. So I just want to... <laughs> Just want to thank everybody who helped uh, make today's meeting come together. Norris was our past president greeter, did a great job. Glenn, Judy, Kathy, they uh, checked you in. Um, unfortunately, we had a little computer problem, so uh, make sure that you give the basket. There we go. It looks like a garbage container, but it's actually a sophisticated badge retrieval system. So uh, put your badge in there. John Rieger helped us out with the raffle. You have a wonderful weekend. Thank you very much. Meeting adjourned.